biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. You're listening to Locked On Now, local experts on the biggest stories around the NFL. I'm your host, Kim Becker, and thank you guys for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday morning. On today's show, we will preview week six of the NFL for the AFC. Which teams will have the best opportunities this weekend and which will have the toughest challenges? We'll find out throughout the show with help from our local Locked On Now experts. But first, let's take a look at the biggest game of the weekend. The biggest game. Neither the Ravens or the Chargers have lost since back in week two, but that will all change on Sunday in Baltimore. Unless, of course, there's a tie, but the slim chances of that are happening. Week six features a a matchup between the two quarterbacks under 30 years old with the most passing yards in the NFL. So this look into the league's future is sure to provide some fireworks. With our first in-depth looks, it, with our first in-depth look at this battle of 4-1 teams, our Locked On Ravens host, Kevin Ostriker. Baltimore Ravens are set to take on the Los Angeles Chargers in week six. This is Kevin Ostriker, host of Locked On Ravens. And for Baltimore, there are plenty of keys in this one, but let's cut it down and just focus on three. Number one, it has to be just Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson on Monday night in week five completes 86% of his passes, throws for a franchise record 442 passing yards, leading that comeback. Jackson is the X factor of this Ravens team, and if he can continue to build on his Monday night performance, it could be a long day for the Chargers, but the number two key is if the Ravens can get their running game going. The Ravens' run game hasn't been as strong as usual. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards done for the season, so they've been relying on guys like Latavius Murray, Tyson Williams, and Some more, only averaged 3.4 yards per carry in that week five game against Indianapolis. And finally, key number three here is just tackle. The Ravens are tied for the league lead in missed tackles with 45. It's been a pretty big struggle throughout the first five weeks of this year. So if they can tighten that up a bit, get the ball carriers on the ground at a bit higher percentage and not miss as many tackles, they could have a good day on defense. But if they continue to miss those tackles, it could be a long day for the Baltimore defense. For more on the Baltimore Ravens and this week six matchup with the Chargers, be sure to follow the Locked On Ravens podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Now, the Chargers are not a team you want to miss any tackles against with weapons like Austin Eckler and Mike Williams and that big arm of Justin Herbert getting the ball out. Both sides are well aware going into this game that any mistake on defense could lead to a six the other way. On the other sideline, however, the Chargers come into this weekend in a bit of an unfamiliar spot, two games ahead of the Chiefs and one game ahead of everyone else in the AFC West. LA is well aware of how hard it is to win that division these days. You know it'll be ready to try and hold on with the lead to that win. The Sunday night game should have been the biggest game between the Steelers and the Seahawks, but Russell Wilson had to have surgery on that gruesome finger injury from week five. But still, this matchup has big game potential. The Steelers gained plenty of doubters throughout their three-game losing streak, which was broken when Pittsburgh knocked off the Broncos last week. But there is still plenty of work to do for a team not used to sitting in last place in the AFC North at two and three. As Locked On Steelers host Christopher Carter explains, a Sunday night meeting with Seattle could be the perfect opportunity to build on that momentum. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast, and this is the biggest key to the game in their Sunday night matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. It comes down to the ground game. Yes, I know Russell Wilson is out, and that is a big deal because Geno Smith will be in for them. But... If the Steelers' run game can do what it's been doing the last two weeks and building and building and getting better, that could neutralize any chances the Seattle Seahawks have in making some comeback attempts later in this game. You saw the Steelers get their first 100-yard rushing game with a running back in Najee Harris for the season and his first in the career with 122 yards against the Denver Broncos. Going into that game, the Broncos were the fifth-best rushing defense in the NFL. They're still the seventh-best after that game. The Seahawks, though, are the second worst rushing defense in the NFL. This is the chance for the Steelers offensive line and Najee Harris to put together a really big week right before the bye, get healthy, and then get back at it the week after that. If the Steelers run game shows up, it will allow that defense to play really aggressive up the turnovers and have a big night Sunday night at Heinz Field. I'm Chris Carter of the Lockdown Steelers podcast. Check out all our work on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google Pack Podcasts, and Odyssey Monday through Friday to get you ready each week for your Pittsburgh Steelers.
Now, after that news broke that Russell Wilson would be out for several weeks due to his finger and missed his first NFL start of his entire career, I had a chance to sit down with our NFL insider, Isaiah Stanback, about what Geno Smith will bring to the table for the Seahawks. He has experience in the NFL, though, you know, like you've said. How do you feel his game will kind of move them forward? Do you think that he's a good fit for him right now? I think he's a great fit. I mean, the attributes that he has, the characteristics that he has, he's fast. He has a nice cannon of an arm. He's experienced. He's been around the league for the last eight years. Um, as a starter, he's 19 and 24. So that's not the stat that you want to kind of turn your attention to. Um, but one of the positive things in terms of him coming in this last game is you wanted to see how this team responded to him. You wanted to see how was he going to take command of this of this huddle? How was he going to make take command of the offense? And they marched it right down the field, down there for 98 yards and a touchdown. So I think they're in good hands. Coming up next, the Titans have something to prove against the Bills. How can they get the big win on Monday night? Plus, we'll go around the league. You're listening to Locked On Now. Welcome back to Locked On Now. I'm Kim Becker. We've already heard about the biggest matchup in the AFC this weekend. So now let's turn to our local Locked On NFL hosts to hear about all of the other games in the AFC around the league. Let's go around the league. Well, one team will earn the title of the worst team in Florida when the 0-5 Jacksonville Jaguars host the 1-4 Miami Dolphins on Sunday. Let's hear what our Locked On Dolphins and Locked On Jaguar hosts have to say about the big game. Kyle Krabs of Locked On Dolphins and Miami's key to victory in week six against the Jacksonville Jaguars is to finally take to one of the coaching mantras that Brian Flores has been preaching to this team all season long, which is to do your job. Defensively, Miami continues to struggle giving up big plays and a lot of points because they're undisciplined on the defensive side of the ball. Too many guys getting outside their run fits or getting too ambitious in coverage and abandoning their real estate, uh, trying to make a play. And the, the other thing the Dolphins need to do is they need to make sure that they are sustaining their early success. Start fast has been another mantra for Brian Flores all year long. And they've done that in a lot of instances, but they have watched leads whittle away as they are unable to maintain their success for a full 60 minutes. In short, play smart, play disciplined, and play complimentary football. Hi, right, it's Tony Wiggins with Locked On Jaguars. The biggest keys to victory this week for the Jacksonville Jaguars is their ability to transition to going to play in Europe against the Miami Dolphins. Something they've done in the past, but this administration hasn't done it with this team since this, this is their first year. The Jaguars have gone to London in several years in a row, and the team had been pretty astute at knowing how to prepare and what to do about the earlier start. But this administration has never done that. So they have to really make sure that they transition this weekend and try to build on the first half momentum that they've had the last three weeks and play better in the second half. Those are the keys to victory for the Jaguars this week against the Dolphins. And finally, the Titans will have their biggest test to date on Monday night when the Buffalo Bills come to town. Here's Locked On Titans, Tyler Rowland, on what Tennessee can try to do to stop arguably the hottest team in the league. Tyler Rowland here, host of the Locked On Titans podcast, with your Tennessee Titans key to victory for a week six matchup on Monday Night Football against the Buffalo Bills. For the Titans, it's all about red zone defense. The Buffalo Bills offense is going to go up and down the field on the Titans. But can the Titans defense bow their neck in the red zone and hold Buffalo to field goals? It's more possible than it may seem because the Buffalo Bills right now are surprisingly struggling as a red zone offense. They're 24th in the NFL with a 58.3 conversion rate in the red zone, turning opportunities into touchdowns. And while the Titans aren't incredibly successful as a red zone defense, they are 18th in the league, giving up touchdowns on 60% of those red zone opportunities. Opportunities. So not absolutely terrible, but not in the top half either. So will the Titans defense be able to stop the Bills when they get into the red zone, hold them to field goals, and turn that into chances for the Titans offense to get touchdowns? That will be the key for the Titans on Monday Night Football. For more analysis, check out the Locked On Titans podcast on whatever platform you do stream. Check out the Locked On Titans YouTube channel. And thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. 
Like Tyler said, thanks for making Locked On Now your first listen. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NFL. For breaking news and local coverage you can't get anywhere else, make sure that you stay Locked On Now.